Welcome to viewer project number two. In this case, it's this beautiful item. <laughs> I picked this project not so much because of what the item is, but more because of how I'm going to make it. Uh, this was sent to me by Jacob, and it's a uh, stand that holds weights. It's, it's like for barbells or something. Anyway, he has this one, but he needs another one, and he couldn't find one. He's been looking. He couldn't find it, contacted me and said, can you make one of these? And I said, sure, and I picked it again because it's an opportunity to do things I haven't yet done on the channel. We're going to make another mother and blanket mold, but we're not going to do it the way I've made mother and blanket molds before where I've, you saw me do it, I brush on all the rubber, lots of layers, build them up, build them up, and then brush on a, a resin mother around it. This way we're gonna do exactly the opposite way. What we're gonna do is build a wooden mother, a wooden case, a shell case around this piece, and then we're gonna pour the rubber inside it. So mother first, blanket second, backwards from how we've done it before, stick around because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. This mold case is going to be made almost entirely on the table saw. And the most critical thing, the most relevant thing, is that angle right there. So I picked up with this angle finder machinery, whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. It's the most handy gadget. I've duplicated that angle. And so the, the wood strips that we're going to make to build this case all have to be cut to this angle. So we'll go over to the table saw. We'll set the saw up to this and uh, cut everything at that angle, and you'll see it'll all fit together, and it'll be magical and wonderful and beautiful. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope it fits, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I think it'll work out fine. As is my usual method, I grubbed around in the shop and found some wood that's gonna suit this project very nicely. It's an old piece of flooring, <laughs> and this is just, uh, I've, this is probably another alley salvage job just a cheap uh, wooden bed frame. But the first step is going to be to set the table saw to this angle. Okay, now we need to get this angle of the blade to match the angle that we need to cut at. All right, let's see, how close are we now? Oh, we're pretty close, pretty close. I'm gonna call that very, very close. Let's cut some wood. You can stay where you are and let's see how we do. This is why I left this table saw really high. I'm gonna be close. Let's see how close I am. We want this next piece, we want, we want this piece to be the same size as this piece, exactamento. I'm gonna line them up here, get them lined up neat and sweet. Come down here. And um, I'm gonna say that those are gonna have to match in length right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that a little bit fat. So that needs to cut like this. That's going to be a tricky cut, let me tell you. That's going to be tricky. I may pull that. I might try to pull this cut. Let's see. This is not amateur hour here, kids. Don't do that. 
this at home. All right, let's see how I did. I know I needed to leave that a little bit fat, and I did leave it a little fat, so let's see how I did. Oh, yeah. That is why I get the big money. All right, that's pretty beautiful. All right, let's take it over to the bench and see how they look. Dun, da, 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 da. Pretty much accomplished everything that needed to happen on the table saw. As you can see, I cut some pieces of wood, uh, blocks of wood. I didn't show you cutting out the little extra piece of wood because I figured you could figure out what that looked like. Um, this is interesting. When I cut the sides, I had these pieces of wood left over, these strips of leftover wood. So I hadn't planned this. My original plan was to put screws in on, to hold down the sides to the base. But then I had this and I realized I had perfect little beautiful tabs of wood um, that I could use as a little lockdown tab. So this wasn't something that I planned for. I just, I, it was just something I saw and said I can take advantage of it. So we'll be putting screws in there to hold the whole thing to the base. These little guys are, uh, you'll see what these are for. I'm gonna glue them up now. And uh, they're gonna be part of the structure of the whole mother shell. So let's get that glued on since we're thinking about it. In fact, let's just go ahead and kind of push this out of the way. Give me a little more room. Get these blocks glued up. All right, let's use my high-tech beautiful glue system. The old stick in the bottle routine. Put some glue on there. Not gonna need a lot. These are not gonna exactly gonna be structural items. Get those on there, we'll do this first. That way the glue can dry while I drill holes in other miscellaneous tasks. The glue just tends to make things just slide around like crazy as you press it out. So, it's handy to have a little squeeze clamp to kind of do the initial squeezing. All right, I got these clamped up, and while the glue sets up, we'll head over to the drill press and drill some holes in these blocks. Let's go. All right, you get the idea, I think, of enough of that. Okay, last one. Like to do some light sanding just to clean up burrs and edges, just a couple of minutes of that. And we will be ready to go. I also, in the meantime, cut a couple of strips of cardboard and uh, they're gonna come in mighty handy because we do have to cope with this problem. And that is a problem, this undercut. See that undercut under there? <laughs> Yeah, that's a problem. So what I needed to make was some dams. I just kind of figured out some cardboard damming, put it in here like that. And uh, it's gonna sit in here, something like that. See how beautiful that fits in there? We're gonna just use the ever popular and ever fabulous sticky wax to glue those in there. But everything uh, that you see in front of you, it's almost all ready to begin to assemble the final case, put it all together. But before we do that, of course, it's all made of wood and wood is porous and that's not good because sometimes silicone rubber has a nasty habit of sticking to unsealed wood. It gets into the pores of the wood and can stick pretty hard. So viewers of this channel know what I'm gonna do, of course. <laughs> Let's go break out the beeswax. Let's 
take away and put the stand aside for a moment. We won't need you for a minute, but we will need all of these pieces, and we are going to liberally coat them with wax. Check out the state of the meltage. So you can see I've just got a simple hot plate set up with a, a wire frame. That keeps the uh, can off the burner so you can't possibly burn the wax. Makes a, a, makes, a, <laughs> makes a pretty big chunk of wax, but we'll get it all melted and we'll get going. Wax is nice and liquidy and ready to go. At long last, we are waxing and we're gonna wax everything. Every square molecule of this boy is gonna get waxed. When I wax wood, I lay it on really heavy and then I use the heat gun to push the wax down into the surface of the wood. Basically, you're heating the surface of the wood enough so that it just absorbs the wax. As far as the rubber is concerned, it's curing against the beeswax surface and the rubber loves beeswax. Of course, your results may vary. You have to check that your rubber that you're working with and the beeswax that you're working with are compatible. Better to have too much wax on the surface than too little. Too much wax doesn't hurt anything. Too little wax and you might have an adhesion problem. So you can see I just slosh it on heavy, not worried about it. A little curious to see if the wax will affect that foam negatively, but it didn't look like it. This is just a styrofoam, this piece. And I have no troubles later on down the line. This is what I like is no troubles. Let's get that thing liberally waxed. I just want the rubber to cure against a wax surface. By the way, here's the trick I'm using. Here is this is the base of the bowl that I'm working on. So I can go ahead and spill wax all over it and uh, we'll just sop it up, use the wax I spill to wax the base itself. It'll be the last thing I do. Let's get these, this cardboard waxed. I'm just soaking this paper with wax and that just renders it pretty much rubber proof. This wood's so hot that it just melts that wax way down into it. All right, you get the idea. I'm gonna finish this up and we'll go on. We're all waxed and now we're gonna assemble. And uh, to do that, we're just gonna use a bunch of drywall screws. I'm gonna come around to that side so you can see what I'm doing. So now we're just gonna hold this into position. Bring our drills over. Really wants to slide around. Okay, let's see how that's gonna work. Oh yeah, that barked up nice and tight. That was all right. That, uh, let's see, oh yeah, that was okay. Good, so we're gonna go around and do all in the same way. <sighs> all of them the same way. Here we go. Nice. Okay, we are right at the point where we're going to do final assembly, but before we can do that, we have to deal with these little cardboard dams. If you'll recall, we have to dam up this part of the, this, this hole in here. We have to dam that up in there. And we're going to do that with our old friend sticky wax. So let's Break out the sticky wax, do it like this. Got a heat gun. What would we do without our heat guns? <laughs> We'd be in trouble. 
All right. And all I'm going to do is sort of liberally apply drop sticky wax onto this piece of cardboard. And yes, we're going to get sticky wax on the original part. And no, I don't believe it will hurt it because it's plastic. And I think we'll be able to just very simply use a little heat and a little bit of thinner and uh, work it off. Okay, so now those are well waxed. And that should work. Put that in and get it lined up nice. And just stick it on there. I got the wax dams all put in place, and I gotta say my clothespin collection <laughs> came in mighty handy. Uh, it takes a little while for the sticky wax to uh, harden up when it's good and warm, and I got it pretty hot. So this is ready to go, all ready to go. To seal the part to the base, the wooden base, I'm just going around with a uh, bead of sprue wax. So that's working really, really well. It's got a good grip on it. That's all we really need to do. So I've gone around just like that, the whole perimeter, and just waxed it on there. And it's nice and tight on there now. Where the cardboard dam joined the plywood, it wasn't such a great line. Uh, I kind of had to hack it and cut it and this and that to make it fit. But I sealed it up with oil clay, and that's just going to work out perfect. Oil clay is the perfect solution in a place like that. It's, I don't love to make uh, parting lines with clay, but I sure do like to dam things up and stop leaks with clay, and it'll work just perfect. Now that the weight base is attached to the wood, we're ready to assemble the frame around it, and it should just drop into place. These pieces serve two functions. One is that they are uh, just fillers. They take up space inside the mold. That's going to save on rubber. But they have another function as well, and that is that they're going to serve as a support for the underside because this is the, this is the underside of the mold, and when we make the actual casting, the whole thing will be flipped over. So this is going to be the bottom of the mold, and these pieces of wood are basically just going to be the feet, the legs of the mold. This one goes over. They're all numbered. Thank God, if I didn't number the parts, I wouldn't know how they go together. They're not perfectly symmetrical, so I number things and mark things up a lot, which helps me reassemble. And then this boy comes in here like this. And all those just get screwed on, and the other one's here. This piece is assembled. All I have to do is put in a few screws and we're ready to pour rubber. But this project has taken up all of this week, so we'll do the actual rubber mold next week. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it, and if you did, hit that like button, because it really helps me out. Thanks so much to all my new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the button. And uh, don't forget, this is the second of our viewer projects. So if you have any ideas for a project, if you have something you want me to help you with, if you just have a great idea you think, uh, people are just sending in ideas for videos. And that really helps me out because it tells me what you guys are interested in and uh, I can focus on uh, maybe helping you out uh, with your specific project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.